In the previous video, we learned how to find the volume and surface area of a pyramid. In this video, we're going to do the same ideas, but for a cone. Now, a cone isn't technically a pyramid, but it's a bit like a pyramid, where rather than having a square base, we have a circular base. The volume of a pyramid was one third multiplied by its base area multiplied by its perpendicular height. And this formula still holds for the volume of a cone. But since the base area is a circle, we know its area will be pi r squared, the area of a circle. And for the perpendicular height, which is the height from the top of the cone, vertically down to the base, we're going to call it h. So we end up with a formula 1 third multiplied by pi r squared multiplied by h, or 1 third pi r squared h. Good news, this formula will be given to you in the exam. Let's use this formula to find the volume of this cone here. So we would do volume equals 1 third multiplied by pi multiplied by r squared, and we can see for this cone the radius is 4, so 4 squared, and then multiplied by h, the perpendicular height, which we can see from this cone is 9, so multiplied by 9. Now assuming this question appears on a calculator paper, we can just type this into the calculator, and you'll get this number here. And it might say, for example, round your answer to one decimal place, in which case we'd get 150.8, and since it's a volume, the units would be centimetres cubed. Here are two more cones for you to try and find the volume of. Be careful on the second cone, I have given you the diameter and not the radius, and make sure you give both answers to one decimal place. So for the first one, we do volume equals one third, multiplied by pi, multiplied by r squared, and we can see the radius is three, so three squared, and then multiplied by h, and the perpendicular height is eight, so multiplied by eight. If you type this into the calculator, you get this number here, which would round to one decimal place as 75.4 centimeters cubed. The second cone, we do volume equals one third multiplied by pi, and then we need to multiply by r squared, but for this cone, you can see I've given you the diameter instead at 20. The radius is half of the diameter, so if we half 20, we find the radius is actually 10. So multiplied by 10 squared, and then multiplied by h, which we can see is 17, so multiplied by 17. If you type this into the calculator, you'll get this number here. And if you round that to one decimal place like the question asks, you get 1780.2 centimeters cubed. So that's the volume covered, now let's take a look at surface area. Before we look at surface area, we need to understand one more length on a cone. So far, we've worked with this length here, which is the radius, and this one here, which is the perpendicular height, which we called h. We also need to know about this height here, which goes on a slope. We call it the slant height, and we give it the letter L. Now that we know this, we're ready to have a look at the formula for the surface area. The surface area of a cone is made up of two faces. We have this circular face on the bottom, and we know the area of a circle is pi r squared. So the surface area formula starts with pi r squared. But there's another face on this cone, which rather than being flat is curved. We call it the curved surface area of the cone. And its formula is pi r l, where l was the slant height that we talked about earlier. So if the curved surface area is pi r l, then the total surface area must be pi r squared plus pi r l. So it's the area of the circular base. And then we add to this the curved surface area. Let's use this formula to find the surface area of a cone. And we'll do this one here, and we're going to do it to two decimal places. So we'd start with surface area equals pi multiplied by r squared, and we can see from this cone the radius is 10, so multiplied by 10 squared. And then we add to this pi multiplied by r, which is 10, uh, multiplied by l, which is the slant height, which is 26. So multiplied by 26. Notice how we don't need the perpendicular height 24 at all to work out the surface area. So all we would do now is type this into the calculator and we'd end up with this number here. And this question says to two decimal places, so 1130.97. Since we're doing a surface area, we'll use the unit centimeters squared. And now here are two more cones for you to find the surface area of. Be careful to give your answers to one decimal place and also notice I've given you the diameter on the second cone again and not the radius. So for the first one, using the formula, we do surface area equals pi multiplied by the radius squared, and the radius of this cone is three, so three squared. And then we add to this pi multiplied by r, which is three, multiplied by l, which is the slant height, which for this cone is five, so multiplied by five. Typing this into your calculator will give this number here, 
and to one decimal place that's 75.4 centimeters squared. For the second cone, we do surface area equals pi multiplied by r squared, and this time the diameter has been given as 3.6. If you have 3.6, you find that r is 1.8. So multiplied by 1.8 squared, and then we add to this the curved surface area, so pi multiplied by r, which is 1.8 again, multiplied by l, which for this cone we can see is 8.2, so multiplied by 8.2. Typing all of this into your calculator gives you this number here, and to one decimal place, that's 56.5 centimeters squared. Now let's have a look at some trickier questions involving cones. So for this question here, we have a cone, and we're told the volume of the cone is 700 centimeters cubed, but notice we've not been given h. The question wants us to work out h, the perpendicular height of the cone, to one decimal place. So if we were working out the volume of the cone, we would use the volume formula 1 3rd pi r squared h. So if we were to work out the volume, we'd do 1 3rd multiplied by pi multiplied by r squared, and we can see the radius is 7, so 7 squared. Then we would normally multiply by h, but we don't know h, so we'll just multiply by h. But we do know what this calculation needs to give. It's the volume of the cone, which we're told in the question is 700 centimeters cubed. So we can say that this is equal to 700. Now we just have an equation to solve. To do this, I would type all of this part into the calculator, which is everything apart from the h on the left hand side. Your calculator should give you back 49 over 3 pi. So we have 49 over 3 pi multiplied by h, which we could write as 49 pi h over 3. So we're going to solve this equation. Now we'll multiply both sides by 3. On the left hand side, the 3s will then cancel, so we just have 49 pi h. And on the right hand side, 700 multiplied by 3 is 2100. Then we can divide both sides by 49 pi, remembering that 49 pi is just a number. On the left hand side, this will cancel the 49 pi, so we just have h. And on the right hand side, you'll need to use your calculator to do 2100 divided by 49 pi. But that will give you this number here. The question says to give it to one decimal place, so we'd say h is 13.6 centimeters. For this question, we have a different cone, and notice we're missing r this time. We're told that the volume of this cone is 1300 centimeters cubed, and we're going to work out r, the radius of the cone, to one decimal place. So we'll do this in a very similar way. We'll start with the formula for the volume of a cone, one third, multiplied by pi, then multiplied by r squared, but we don't know r, so we'll just write multiplied by r squared, and then multiplied by h, but we do know h, h is 18. And this must equal the volume we're given in the question, 1300. So it equals 1300. For this one, I would change around the order of the multiplications, so it's 1 third multiplied by pi multiplied by 18 multiplied by r squared. Then we'll work out this part here. You can type this into your calculator, and you'll see it gives you 6 pi. So this is just the same as 6 pi. So we have 6 pi multiplied by r squared, which is 6 pi r squared. So we have this equation to solve. This time, we'll start by dividing both sides by 6 pi. On the left hand side, the 6 pi will cancel, so we have r squared. And on the right hand side, 1300 divided by 6 pi gives you this number here. Now this is not the value of r, but the value of r squared. So we need to square root both sides of the equation. If we square root the left hand side, the square root of r squared is r. And if we square root the right hand side, we square root this number on your calculator, and you'll end up with this number here. The question says to give it to one decimal place, so r is 8.3. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and why not try the exam questions in this video's description.